and, and Bernoulli physics is the thing is the physics that makes wings on an airplane lift. Yeah. All right. And, and, and many, many other things. Um, I can have yeah, sort of a funny over. It pulls it towards it. Basically. Yeah. yeah it creates a vacuum. Physics. Creates, creates a vacuum. Bernoulli physics and singing real quick, Draven. Bernoulli physics and singing. I'm, 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 I'm in my trachea. These are my focal folds. If I blow at the right optimized level through the vocal folds, it will create a vacuum in the glottis. Now, glottis just means the space between my vocal folds, okay? Yeah, my glottis yeah. is open, my glottis is closed. Now, if I blow enough wind through this, it creates a vacuum, and the vocal folds will they'll close. You'll, you'll, you'll induce vocal fold adduction through Bernoulli physics. And when you do that, that's when you begin to get good Apajo-type resonation and singing experiences which means really great respiration and it's when you get vocal fold closure i like to call it passive vocal fold closure through bernoulli physics by creating a vacuum and that way you get vocal fold closure without squeezing muscles without without paying the price of getting fatigued by squeezing too much, by twanging too much or too hard, or beyond that optimized level, the physiology, because you're getting vocal fold closure through the brutality of physics, which is really like taking a basketball, taking a basketball shot and, and, and making all net, just, just an all net shot without it bouncing off the rim. If you can get a closure, can't always do it. Sometimes you're still singing great, and then everybody's having fun. You're having fun as a singer, but you're not really getting great Bernoulli physics. You might just try to squeeze to get yourself through it from time to time. But when we're shooting for baskets in singing, best practice would be to try to get good Bernoulli physics in through the glottis so you get passive fold closure through this vacuum and, be, and being able to kind of let loose... On, on the on, on the musketeer squeezing a little bit. We have two balloons tied with strings and stuck at a height. What will happen if you blow between the balloons? Let's take a look. Unlike what we expect, the balloons actually come together and stick to each other when air is blown between them. Why did this happen? When air is blown between the balloons, the air starts moving at a higher speed than the air around it. Daniel Bernoulli has explained that a fast-moving air exerts lower pressure on any object than static air. Air is flowing between the balloons, air on the farther sides is static. Hence, pressure between the balloons is lower than the pressure on the farther sides of the balloons. This pushes the balloons inside, making them stick to each other.